Good evening, and welcome to episode seven of Will You Review My CV? I'm your host, Alan Wozni, and today I'm highlighting an article I published on 15th of August in 2019, so just under two years ago. The article was titled, uh, SAS and My CV, a real life example from Nuera Insurance, or Nuera, Nuera Insurance, here, actually here in Calgary, and I think they're Canadian, a Canadian company. The article I wrote expands upon the podcast that I, I, had, uh, I had published, also titled uh, SAS, uh, Will You Review My CV? And that, that podcast was aired, or I published it on 24th of June, 2019, and that was titled SAS Skills and uh, My CV, where I focused where, what I believe is the need to understand the latest SAS, which is available on the market, global market, not just your local market, but the global market, whether or not whether or not your business or your company or your dysfunctional area has adopted such SaaS. Um, so it's, it's whatever your functional area is and whatever, whatever um, the SaaS play or software as a service that's available on the market, it doesn't, you know, just because your company hasn't adopted, my view is you can still learn it and be aware of it so in case uh, that changes, your job changes, or the company is looking for a, a SaaS uh, option in the future. That article was also the ep focus of episode two of this channel, which, uh, which, I, which I published on 2nd of June, and that was titled, A Real Life Example, My Uridu Experience in uh, Qatar. So you can, you can, you can link to, go to episode two of this channel. SAS to the rescue. The automation allows me to spend more time talking with the customers to understand their concerns, and obtain proper feedback. This was the comment from Sarah. Sarah was the regional broker of Nuera Insurance when she made a follow-up call to me after I placed my in home renter's insurance with her company Nuera a few, minutes, a few moments earlier, not days or hours, a few moments, minutes later after using their online application process. So she followed up. As Sarah further explained, the automation process takes away the manual tasks of confirming the property details, the tenant background, obtaining competing quotes from underwriters and other manual duties insurance brokers tend to need to, they need to complete. This was music, this was music to my ears. Not only did I manage to obtain a quote from an online platform, but as soon as I submitted my payment details, which was a visa, credit card. The full policy was emailed to my chosen address and I was immediately able to forward to the real estate broker for the rental, for the property I'm renting right now here in Southwest Calgary. Why is this important? Surely this happens all the time. Now, keep in mind, this was two years ago. Time, things could have changed. I'm not here to, to, to judge whether they're, I'm not the, 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 the judge and advocate jury of whether this still exists, but two years ago, when I rented this property here, uh, this was the condition that existed. So SAS, software as a service, what is this? On Thursday afternoon, 8th of August, 2019, I signed the rental agreement for our new home here in Calgary. One clause in the agreement required that I put in place the necessary insurance, including the comprehensive liability and relevant home contents insurance on or before we took possession of the property on uh, 15th of August, 2019. My first thought was to contact the, the insurance company that I've been using since 2006. When I was living overseas, we did own a condo in, in Inglewood and I place the, the, uh, the annual the, the insurance for that home. Now, I was an owner. The, the policies are different as for owner than a renter, but I thought I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. For 13 years, I assumed that making an online inquiry, they would have my details on hand and a quote would make it into my inbox the next day. Wrong. Was I ever wrong? The message from the insurer came on Tuesday, 13th of August. I guess that was... Four days later, five days later, calendar days with some weekends, probably three business days. Two full business days, sorry. It was two full business days after I submitted an online request. To top it off, the response came back as if I were totally a new customer and only my first name was used, which was the agent just pulled from my online submission. 
after an exchange of emails, so this is a lot of friction, uh, my incumbent insurer, the, from the incumbent, they're the incumbent, maybe 13 years, I give them the, give them the respect, all due respect. The agent apologized for the mistake as she managed to look at my existing file and even quoted the policy number from the agent that initially published, uh, placed my insurance back in 2006. She gave me the option to remain with the existing agent or to her, for her, to continue processing the request for a quotation. Brilliant. As if waiting five calendar days wasn't enough, she injects, injects more friction into the process and I still had to make a decision. Automation and job loss. Sarah, the regional broker from Noir Insurance, provided sympathy with her peers in the, indust in the insurance industry. When I meet brokers from other cities to train them on our software, they are concerned about losing their job from automation. You know, Sarah explains to these brokers that she does not feel threatened by automation and that that is the reason she's training them today. The routine tasks of obtaining quotes, property details, and submitting to underwriters for a quote, that's handled by the SaaS system of Nuera. In fact, Sarah indicated the company is seeking to add on more insurance products to expand the automation for their commercial and residential customers. Wait, what? More automation of more products and service lines? I want to, I want to quote from a 2018 Gardner report, which outlines, which outlines, explore the possibilities of AI driven autonomous capabilities. Keep in mind, AI being artificial intelligence, Keep in mind, these devices are best suited for narrowly defined purposes. They do not have the same cap capability as a human brain for decision-making intelligence or general purpose learning. So let's think about Sarah's situation because Sarah wants to add on more products and she wants to train more brokers and more people on how to use that service. David Ulovich, a partner at uh, a general partner uh, at Andreessen Horowitz explains the phenomena of adding on more products in a May 2019 Andreessen Horowitz podcast. It was titled, What Time Is It? From Technical to Product to Sales CEO. SaaS developers earn the right to upscale their features. He explained, but this is two years ago as well. He explained how you, Zoom, this, the, 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 the mode of transport or communication of 90% of the people on the market today when they're because of COVID was a single source peer-to-peer -peer voice calling product. But as more and more individuals within an organization adopted that product, Zoom started offering conference calling and other added on features. So just like Sarah at New Era Insurance, Zoom took advantage of people using their product to bolt on additional, uh, additional or to hook their customers into adding more things. So negative, he, David Yulovich mentions here, negative returns in the short term with the idea to generate profitability and customer loyalty over the long term. That negative returns is, is, is really analogous to freemium, the freemium model. And if not, if people aren't, the listeners to this uh, YouTube channel aren't aware of it, the freemium term stems from a 2006 blog by venture capitalist, Fred Wilson. Give your service away for free, possibly ad supported, but maybe not. Acquire a lot of customers very efficiently through word of mouth, referrals, organic search, et cetera. Then offer premium priced value added services or an enhanced version of your service to your customer base. Let's take Sarah. Sarah's already got this. She has this figured out. This was two years ago. I wonder where they are today, but I'd like to, I would like to revisit that. Maybe I'll invite Sarah onto my, this YouTube channel to speak about that. By noon today, the incumbent insurer hung around for one last kick at the can. By late Tuesday, 13th of August, I had not received a reply to my, to my request for the agent to process my quote. I thought it would be quicker to allow her to continue rather than wait for the initial agent who had been hanging around since 2016. Early in the morning of Wednesday, 14th of August. So one day, my deadline is 15th. I need this quote. I need this in place. 
before he takes possession of his property. They come and ask, I sent an email asking follow up whether a quote could be delivered by the close of business on this day, since I needed to have the policy to be effective the next day, the 15th of August. In parallel, in parallel I emailed my real estate agent requesting a referral for an insurance because I, I didn't have access to, on my own. I didn't have any success on my own, not access. I didn't have success. That is when I came in contact with New Era Insurance. Is it coincidence that the derivative of their name is a play on the words new, new era, new and era? I think not. I think that's the reason why they have that name for their company. The incumbent. The email from the real estate agent provided me. Oh, so the incumbent I'm waiting, still waiting. My real estate agent gave me two choices. I could go to the online site or call the 1-800 helpline. I chose the helpline because I was concerned I'd go back to the loop of my incumbent insurer by sending an e online request and then they're gonna funnel me to the email, which I didn't know. No judgment, I, ju I just didn't know. So my perspective was, I'm gonna call the 1-800 number. So I called the helpline and thinking that the voice call is gonna be quicker and the girl, particularly since my last, oh yeah. So, and then the representative, I took her name down, Teresa. The representative of New Era was on the phone, the 1-800 number, immediately informed me that it would be faster if I completed the process online. And she would remain on the phone to walk me through the competitive quote. Wow. Not only could I do it online, but Teresa was going to hold, she was going to wait for me online. Teresa said it should only take a few minutes. That was an understatement. Within a few clicks, the quote appeared on the screen, including a summary of my personal details, the address, of this rental property. I could even change some of the key variables, such as the overall liability, the coverage that I wanted, the personal effects coverage, and the deductible. Literally seconds passed before a revised quote was provided, including a monthly or annual payment option. It was 11.38 a.m. I, I gave the incumbent I gave them until noon. I gave them, I gave them the benefit. I was ready to submit my credit card details, but I wanted to give the incumbent the benefit of the doubt. True to her word, the legacy agent returned with a quotation, a PDF file attached to an email. She got, got it by noon. More friction. Was I had to download the PDF copy. It wasn't a readable, right? Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. I had to download it, print it off, sign it manually and then upload it and uh, wow, it would just take another three, four days probably. By 12.05, I received an email from Nuera Insurance with a PDF copy of the full, full year policy, which I then emailed to the real estate agent, same day, to ensure I was in full compliance with the terms and conditions of the rental agreement. Manual versus automated. As any driver of a passenger vehicle will understand, a manual transmission is much more difficult to drive than an automatic transmission. Learning how to use the clutch to switch gears while you step on the gas pedal takes skill. It takes time to learn. Driving an automatic vehicle is much easier. The insurance broker from Nuera has a much easier task of navigating through the myriad paths of clients and roadways, all that. It's been, I don't know how old that process is, the decades or centuries maybe not centuries, but the, that process of compiling and putting that, that quote in place, manually done for decades. They're now doing it with a new policy in place automatically. So they've taken what was a manual process and, and automatically. How does this relate to a scenario of an individual seeking employment in this sector? If I was an insurance broker, imagine the difference, the candidacy, someone who's working for New Era for the next two to three years, versus the manual oriented one, the incumbent, who has to manually file, who has to email, has to make a phone call, who is a PDF driven environment compared to the new era person who's probably adopting more software as a service. As Sarah mentioned, we're gonna bolt on more services. We're gonna see what we can do. Possibly artificial intelligence, possibly machine learning to get handle that customer queries. Maybe a, a chat bot that's handling most of that don't even need the agent online. They're there in case, in case something goes wrong in that process. Automated insurance or insure tech. Well, not necessarily, if you're learning this, does not necessarily guarantee 
the broker will find a job easier than his or her peer. But as the new era agent Sarah explained, we are working with our tech colleagues to add more features. Ignoring tech developments in the insurance industry just because your current employer has you bogged down to continue running your manual processes will likely reduce that individual's, from my incumbent, sure, probably reduce their, that individual's competitive, not forget the company, but that individual herself, herself she happened to be a woman, her competitiveness will, it'll just, it'll hurt her when she goes to look for jobs in the future. If for some reason that company does survive, but they just, they just reduce their business because everyone's going automated. It was the same as my already do episode two of this, the already do experience. The person handling my mobile when I was terminating my contract, which is a very same, it was a very manual process to, to complete that termination. Ultimately, the market will decide. The market will decide how long that manual insurance will continue to exist. You're going to pay a premium for that because guess what? My insurance, the insurance that uh, the quote that uh, I got from Nuera was 25% less. So the market will decide. There's no way they'll continue paying a premium when they find out that you can get a, a more affordable, a more efficient, and more effective. It saves me a lot of time and hassle. The market will decide how busy that person. The woman said, the poor staff, she had to apologize after I declined to, to take their, their uh, service. It has been busy at the office. We were short-staffed. It's going to be the market will decide going forward. Now, you, I write this here. Ignorance is not a bliss. Not knowing, not being aware of the products on the market. I've said this in past episodes and I've written, episodes, I've written articles about this. I've been following the SaaS space since 2000, early 2018, late mid-2018. I followed, I download the current, uh, tech. it's not just insurance, but just the insurance tech side. I've been following these feeds since about August 2018 or mid eight, sorry, mid, mid 2018. But the time of writing this article, there, I just I compartmentalize insurance SaaS. And I have, I have colleagues in the insurance industry, so I kind of kept this, these lists. I'm going to share my screen because I want to go through some of the samples which existed two years ago, August 2019. I'm not here to tell you that this, the market, these are the, 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 these are the only options available. Certainly not at that point in time and certainly not today. So I'm going to share my screen, and I want to go over this now and show you what I'm looking at. So this, again, at the time of writing, this article was August 15, 2019. So some of the exam examples that I had, I had curated and kept lists of. Sure, Global InsureTech Platform. Hi, Marley. There's a dog. There's a show called Me and Marley. Marley and me. A Boston-based insurer. Get safe. German-based, aimed at millennials. Not surprising. Recently, uh, a few months ago, there was a, a fintech, three fintechs plays targeting teenagers and, you know, so targeting millennials for insurance because my daughters don't, aren't aware of what insurance, you know, they're just getting used to this, getting exposed to that idea. Uh, millennial age, I don't know how many parents out there have millennial, millennial age kids, but it's probably not a bad, probably not a bad uh, market to target, get them used to the, the concept of insurance. West Hill Inc., Atlanta, the guarantors. It's kind of interesting. Guarantees rent payments for landlords. So real estate is, is, is obviously hot in any market, most markets in big cities in North America, Europe. Um, that could be an interesting play today. I wonder where they're at. Zaguro. Ah, I wonder if it's a better view. So they're using AI, artificial intelligence. Remember the Gardner article I mentioned from 2018? Artificial intelligence was, in, was increasing. AI, property and building insight, a workflow platform for insurance companies. So it's probably using artificial intelligence either to scan photos or data on the property and buildings uh, of a real estate uh, company. It's a guru. Cyber insurance startup focused on helping small businesses mitigate their cyber risks. You know, the cryptocurrencies, the rise of cryptocurrencies, the, the cyber recent, there's been a lot of, um, uh, last week, or a couple weeks ago, the Colonial Pipeline in the US, and last week was a food, or the week before was a ransomware. I mean, that cyber kind of environment. Um, my friend Robert from Marsh, Robert Brundrett, if you're listening to this uh, episode, 
you and I talked about cyber, you wanted to get into cyber insurance. This was two years ago as a girl, kind of a cool thing. Coalition, cyber, uh, San Francisco cybersecurity insurance company. Again, the second, that's the second of two. Um, cyber risk is, is huge. Been a, last few years been very huge. Recent uh, ransomware uh, articles have, or uh, hacks have, made, have put more light on this, this area. World cover. Affordable crop insurance for farmers. So the pandemic, the beginning of COVID, it was a pot, ag tech has been huge. Ag tech was pre-COVID, it was huge. But during COVID, there was a lot of uh, supply, perishable foods were, were, didn't get picked from the crops and the farms because they couldn't get the farmers there. Shipped to the warehouses, nobody picked them up to get to deliver to the stores. So there was waste at the farm, in the warehouse, and then again in the because of the pandemic and the uncertainty, a lot was a lot of perishable goods sat in the back of, of, of many shops. It was an article I listened to. It was a podcast I listened to from TED Talks. It wasn't something I made up. So this is important. Ag tech and agriculture, food supply, obviously very important. The pandemic highlighted that area. Root insurance. Uh, oh, and broker. Digital insurance company caters to small and medium-sized businesses during the pandemic. And still for seven, second and third waves, small businesses hugely impacted uh, because of the pandemic. People not allowed to go to the shop with the restaurants or, or retailers, small retailers who couldn't, uh, couldn't afford to keep staff on. So this is a huge place. Citora, I don't know the company, but again, AI powered software for commercial underwriting. Um, Fly Real, another AI. These are, there's three or four now in this little batch, AI focused, um, um, insurance products. So I want to stop the screen share. And I think, again, the, the, important, the important thing is here, I wanted to say this, these examples were from my venture capital, the newsletter I've I subscribed to. I still subscribe for the last now three and a half, four years. And this isn't a complete list. That was not a complete list then. It is certainly not a complete list now. The market's the market, uh, what's available on the market is, is probably even ten, tenfold, maybe tenfold, maybe maybe not so much, but there's a, certainly a lot of available products on the market. Will you review my CV? When I'm asked that, by a broker or similar executive from the insurance industry, presuming they're going to come to me at some point and ask for my help, maybe not my help, but somebody like me, the inevitable response should be, what SaaS are applicable to the insurance industry what have you done to upgrade your skills in relation to such staffs? I want to, I want to emphasize Nuera, Sarah, and her colleagues versus the manual of the incumbent two years ago. Imagine Sarah and her colleagues being trained on different SaaS and what's available, the products. The difference in her candidacy, if she's looking in the market, who are you going to hire? The person who's still manually focused, who has no awareness of the SaaS products that I just highlighted or any other on the market. I'm your host, Alan Wozni, and thanks for listening today on this very, I believe, is a very important subject. Have a great day and stay safe. Cheers.